as is very well established, I am not a software lawyer. I know, crazy, who would have guessed? But I am very intrigued to see how this whole Red Hat Rail source code situation is going to play out. My first video was on the original announcement of the changes, my second video was on the response to the community backlash, and this third video is going to be on the Software Freedom Conservancy's take. A comprehensive analysis of the GPL issues with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux Rail business model. And if all goes well, if nothing else crazy happens, this is hopefully going to be my last video on this topic. At least for now. For approximately 20 years, Red Hat, now a fully owned subsidiary of IBM, $34 billion back in 2019, has experimented with building a business model for operating system development and distribution that looks, feels, and acts like a proprietary one, but nonetheless complies with the GPL and other standard copyleft terms. Software rights activists, including the SFC, the Software Freedom Conservancy, have spent decades talking to Red Hat and its attorneys about how the Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL business model courts disaster and is actively unfriendly to community-oriented, free and open source software, FOSS. Recent events show that the behavior has simply gotten worse, and is likely to get even worse. What exactly is the RHEL business model? The most concise way to describe RHEL's business model is if you exercise your rights under the GPL, your money is no good here. So RHEL offers a support and automatic update contract. And as we understand it, this contract clearly states that the terms do not intend to contradict any rights to copy, modify, redistribute, and or reinstall the software as many times and as many places as the customer likes. Though, the contract indicates that if the customer engages in these activities, that Red Hat reserves the right to cancel that contract and make no further contracts with the customer for support and update services. Basically, you have two options. You can 1. Make use of your software freedom rights, or 2. Remain a Red Hat customer. In some versions of the contract, Red Hat even reserves the right to review a customer to examine how many copies of RHEL are actually installed. Red Hat's lawyers clearly take the position that this business model complies with the GPL, though we aren't so sure, on grounds that nothing in the GPL requires an entity to keep a business relationship with any other. They have further argued that such business relationships can be terminated based on any behaviours, including exercising rights guaranteed by the GPL agreements. So the GPL only guarantees you access to the current version of the software. If they are giving you access to that code, that's all they need to give you. If they decide, okay, well, that's the last version you get, you're no longer a customer anymore, that's all they have to give you. You are not entitled to anything further. Whether that is or is not legal is a matter of intense debate and can really only be solved with a court case. But one thing is pretty clear. There is no doubt that this provision is not in the spirit of the GPL agreements. The real business model is unfriendly, capricious, capricious, and cringeworthy. In case you are unclear on the stance the Software Freedom Conservancy took on REL, uh, this should pretty much sum it up. But the SFC does give them credit where credit is due. Furthermore, the RHEL business model remains to our knowledge rather unique in the software industry. IBM's Red Hat definitely deserves credit for so carefully constructing their business model such that it has spent most of the last two decades in murky territory of probably not violating the GPL. But that doesn't mean they have never slipped up. And I don't just mean since IBM has taken over, I mean in the entire lifetime of Red Hat. There are two incidents where they slightly stepped over that line. The first violation was with a Fortune 500 company. This company was using RHEL internally on their servers, but they were also offering a product. This product made use of CentOS Linux. Now, this company didn't ask for support or updates with this CentOS Linux product, but some of the packages available on the product were pulled directly from RHEL sources. Red Hat wasn't exactly happy with this happening and threatened to revoke support for their internal RHEL servers, unless they paid Red Hat some royalties. Now, the GPL explicitly states that demanding royalties cannot be done. You may not impose any further restrictions on the exercise of the rights granted or affirmed under this license. For example, you may not impose a license fee, royalty, 
or other charge for exercise of rights granted under this license. Now, being such a massive company, they had a lot of lawyers. Basically, they just said, no, our legal team is bigger than your legal team, and eventually, Red Hat backed down. They did keep being Rail customers for a long time into the future. Now, when the SFC learned of this incident, they informed Red Hat that the past royalty demand was a violation. Red Hat did not dispute nor agree that it was a violation, and did informally agree such demands would not be made in the future. Now, this second incident is about directly using RHEL. So this second company, they had a RHEL support contract, and they realized the contract was a little bit too big, and they didn't need as many RHEL licenses. So they went to Red Hat and said, hey, can we lower our contract to have less computers on the license? Red Hat said, sure, go ahead and do so under the additional agreement that you go and delete RHEL from all of the computers now not under the support contract. And again, this is a further restriction. The GPL agreements give everyone the unfettered right to make and keep as many copies of the software as they like, and a distributor of GPL software may not require a user to attest that they've deleted these legitimate licensed copies of third-party licensed software under the GPL. The SFC informed Red Hat's legal department of this violation, and we were assured that this additional agreement would not be presented to any Red Hat customers in the future. In both these situations, we at SFC were worried they were merely a tip of the proverbial iceberg. I think if they do something again, it is absolutely worth bringing up those earlier scenarios. But when nothing happens for 5 or 10 years, whether it's for an individual or for a company like this, I don't like the idea of just bringing things up just out of the blue. But for years we have heard from Red Hat customers who are truly confused. It's common in the industry to talk about REL seat licenses. The idea of a seat license is you buy a number of licenses for how many systems can be used at once, as opposed to a regular software license where it indicates how many installs you can have. So if you have a 25 seat license, 25 users at once can be using that system. And many software acquisition specialists in the industry are not aware of the nuances of the REL business model and do not understand their rights. We remain very concerned that REL salespeople purposely confuse customers to sell more seat licenses, and they also remain concerned about GPL violations. We fear that it may be through incompetence or malice, many REL salespeople and business development professionals may regularly violate GPL and no one knows about it. I feel like that's a pretty big statement to make, especially when coming from the Software Freedom Conservancy. If you have some evidence of REL salespeople actually violating the GPL, that is one thing. Go ahead and say it. But just as like a general statement, oh, they might be violating the GPL, that is going to be taken by some people as they absolutely are doing it, and Red Hat is evil, and Red Hat can never recover. So I'm pretty wary about just making a statement like that. But let's shift gears and talk about CentOS. Why was independent CentOS so important? Red Hat acquired CentOS in 2014, and that was sort of the canary in the murky coal mine. If CentOS seemed vibrant, usable, and a viable alternative to RHEL for those who didn't want to purchase Red Hat's updates and services, the community could rest easy. Even if there were GPL violations by Red Hat on RHEL, CentOS's vibrancy assured that such violations were having only a minor negative impact on the FOSS community around RHEL's codebase. But all of that changed when Red Hat acquired CentOS. Initially, this was treated like more of a cooperation agreement. Eventually, though, CentOS was completely canned in favor of CentOS Stream. And up until very recently, Alma Linux and Rocky Linux have fit into this gap left by CentOS. Now, though, it's kind of up in the air on whether they can even continue existing. The GPL agreements did not obligate Red Hat to make its source code publicly available to everyone. This is a common misconception about GPL's requirements. While the details of the source code provisioning vary in different versions of the GPL agreements, the general principle is that the source code needs to be provided either A, along with the binary distributions to those who receive, B, to those who request pursuant to a written offer for source. 
In a normal situation with no mitigating factors, the fact that a company moved from distributing source code publicly to everyone to only give it to customers who received the binaries already would not raise concerns. In this situation, however, this completes what appears to be a decade-long plan by Red Hat to maximize the level of difficulty of those in the community who wish to trust but verify that RHEL complies with the GPL agreements. Rocky Linux and Alma Linux sought to build Linux-based distributions that mirrored RHEL releases, and it is now unclear if they can do that effectively, since Red Hat will undoubtedly capriciously refuse to sell them exactly one RHEL service and update seat license at a reasonable price. It appears that as of this week, one must have at least that to get timely access to RHEL source code. So it is very clear the Software Freedom Conservancy is not happy about the current state of Red Hat and are not happy about the direction it seems like they are going. I don't know where they are going. It's entirely possible that one day Red Hat is another Oracle. But it's also entirely possible that where they are right now, they never move from. I hope that where they are right now they never move from, or possibly even revert some of the changes they've made, maybe even offering something more akin to traditional CentOS. And with that, we are at the end of the saga. I really hope that unless Red Hat is like, planning to revert everything, something else doesn't happen. Because as much as I enjoy talking about this topic, there are plenty of other things out there I want to talk about as well. And this has just consumed basically my entire week. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video, um, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out Patreon, subscribe to the Liberapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.